Hey guys, it's SD, your host of the Life Fix Relationship Podcast, where people with all sorts of backgrounds, challenges, and life experience show us how they make their relationship extraordinary. Hey guys, we're here today with Nicole Odom Hardit. How are you? I'm fine. How are you? Great. So excited to be here. You want to tell us a bit about yourself and what you do? Okay. So um, I am an entrepreneur. Currently, I own uh, Focus Point Solutions, doing business as Focus Point Behavioral Health. And I'm actually jumping into a new business venture. Um, I am working with actually blended families and um, the whole dynamics of building families and their relationships and their marriage and also working with families who um, want to work and build their business together. Wow. So those people are, it's much more complicating having your business and family. Yes. Yeah. So my husband and I, um, we have a blended family, but we also have a business. We work in our business together. So we live together, we work together, we're married. And um, so we do everything together. There is some separation. Of course, we do have things outside on our own. Um, but we um, run a successful business together. I actually started my business on my own before we met, Um, but my business actually kind of exploded on me unexpectedly, so I had to bring him in. Um, Now he does own his own uh, businesses, so he does run his businesses outside of me, but he does also help me with my business as well. Oh, wow. So like people that are now stuck in quarantine with their spouses and like not sure how to handle it that you do it all day every day (laughs) right right so this house is full of love and warmth and business conversation so how do you balance it all and keep everybody sane you know my husband um actually has a cutoff switch but I've been told that I do not have a cutoff switch when it comes to business Um, When I'm thinking of something, I run from um, morning to evening. Um, I tend to wake up sometimes at maybe three in the morning and I may be thinking of something and I may have to run downstairs and write it down or it may keep me up at night or at five in the morning when he's he's an early, early riser. I'm an early riser, but he is like crack a dawn riser. And I just have to spit it out. I have to tell someone what I'm thinking. And it's always him. I'm like, hey, I just thought of this. I just need to get it off my chest. What do you think about it? <laughs> so what's that like for him or for your relationship? Um, you know, sometimes it, it can be a bit of a burden um, because, again, there's, this house is full of business conversation, so it tends to get overwhelming because we don't always agree. So let me just say, let me put that out there. We, we don't always see eye to eye on how you handle things. And sometimes, you know, I want to, okay, let's handle it this way. And he say, mm, that may not be appropriate because he is my HR. He handles my HR. This may not be appropriate. This may get us in some trouble. And so I have to reel things back. (laughs) And I say, okay, I understand. And I have to look at his point of view from things and and vice versa sometimes. So he keeps you in line. (laughs) Yes, he does keep me in line. I I can be a bit of a fireball. (laughs) I see. (laughs) All the energy in you. (laughs) Yes. (laughs) So how do you make sure that things are always running smoothly? Um, we do have our, our date nights, even in our quarantine, we have our, our settle down time. We have our move, movie time, our alone time. And before, uh, quarantine hit, we had our date nights outside of the home where it's no business. And, and we have, even now we have, okay, we're not going to say anything about the business. And I think even our, um, my employees, they think that just because we're in the same house, if they tell me something or if they tell him something that we're always, okay, well, she said this or he said that. And we're just supposed to, because we sleep together and live together, that we're supposed to, you know, relay the message to one another. And it doesn't always happen like that. So we do have, you know, that line in the sand where it doesn't always get to one another. Yeah, so you have your date nights and you make sure to separate your work from your home. 
but how do you separate from each other as in keep your own individual identity? Well, he has his things. He has his, you know, his guy time and, you know, his, his me time. And I have my me time. I have things that I like to do outside of the house. I love to shop and I like to do that alone. I have my, you know, my wusa or my, you know, my mental health day, if, if you will, where I like to go out and do things by myself, where I, I just let everything go. I, you know, I still take my calls every day um, <laughs> and things from the office, but I just like to have that downtime so I can just, you know, do me. Yeah, it sounds like you have really good boundaries of your me time and your home and putting separation for your priorities and your values. You, I mean, you have to have boundaries. It can't be um, 24-7 or 365 days a, uh, a year if you're working together. If you decide to have a business together or even if you have a 9 to 5 and you're working in the same office together, it can't always be uh, go, 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 go in constant business talk all the time. You have to have your, you know, your romance and your wine and dine, or if you just decide to talk about the kids or whatever's going on at home, you have to have some sort of separation. You know, you're living uh, in the world and, you know, realistic things or worldly things go on. So if you like to go to church together, or if you like shopping together, if you play sports or movies or whatever it is, you have your quality, you know, relationship, husband and wife or girlfriend from boyfriend or whatever it is time together and there has to be some sort of boundary and then you also have to have your me time whether you you know hang out with your friends your guy friends your girlfriends or whomever it is there has to be some sort of separation somewhere yeah do you plan this stuff beforehand or you just take it what feels right at the moment you know, it depends. Sometimes we plan things. We go on vacation together. We go on, you know, um, trips with the family. Um, but, you know, sometimes on the Saturday, we just get up and say, hey, let's go here. Let's do this or whatever. So it could be a spur of the moment. Uh, sometimes those days are usually the best days. You know, <laughs> if he has some errands to run, I may, hey, I don't have anything to do or my plans got canceled or whatever. And I just tag along. Wow, fun. Mm -hmm. Oh, now how do you keep your communication open in all areas of your life? You know, we started early on in the dating process with a line of open communication. I have always been um, very upfront and open and honest with whomever I deal with. I usually don't hold back when speaking to someone. I usually put everything out there and how I'm feeling and what I'm thinking about. So we started that early on. So with him and I, with our communication, we usually don't have a problem with whatever he's thinking or whatever I'm thinking. We don't have a problem with coming to each other for, with whatever it is. We just sit down and, and, and let it go. The good, the bad, the ugly, um, whether he's having a problem in his business, whether he's having a problem in my business with whatever it may be, we talk about it. And I think that's what makes us great. That's what makes our team work well. We are, we've been, we started as best friends like first and that's what I think has made us successful. Yeah. So it's the friendship part that holds yes. you. So has that ever backfired being so open, saying all your feelings, everything you want? I don't know if it has really backfired. It has caused a little bit of hurt feelings, but I have always been one, I would rather know, especially know from someone that I know that loves me than hear it on the street somewhere. Exactly. Also, when you create that safe space that I'm saying whatever I want and I feel, and you have the opportunity to say however you feel, then we know we're just being honest here and safe and it's for the good of the relationship. We're not right. trying to fight the person, just right. trying to share that. Right. And we're both very respectful and tactful in the way that we say things. 
And um, we're very cautious and, you know, again, very respectful in the way that we say things to each other. No one's trying to tear anyone down or hurt anyone's feelings. We just put it out there, you know, the way that it is before someone else would say anything. Hey, you want to make sure that you're looking out for this or uh, if you're thinking about this, maybe you should think about this before doing that because it could hurt something else maybe down the line. Yes. Thinking about the whole thing. Yes. How do you deal with challenges? We make, uh, you know, I make sure that I think of the, the bigger picture before um, getting into anything, um, whether it's big or a small situation before I tackle any type of challenge. And I make sure I look at who it's going to affect um, whether it's going to affect me personally, whether it's going to affect the company before I, before I do anything. So you're always thinking of the next step, not just for right now, but the whole bigger picture. Wow. How has your relationship changed from when you met him till now? Our relationship has gotten a lot stronger. Um, I came into the relationship with Um, a lot of reservation because I've had some major trust issues. I can definitely say I let down my guard quite a bit. Um, I am not as reserved as I used to be. I I think I'm one, I, well, I am 100% me now. Yeah. So that has to come over time. The trust has happened overnight. Definitely. Definitely. We've been together for 10 years. Wow. Yeah. A lot has changed. Yeah. So how were you able to build a trust, get rid of the stuff in the past that has happened and come with a new frame of mind to this relationship? It came with going through a lot of ups and downs. We went through a lot of financial difficulties with growing our businesses. Both of our businesses went through some struggles. You know, it was like one year he had money and one year I I didn't, I had money and it was like back and forth, like a seesaw and we had to rely on each other. And I had never relied on anyone. I had always made my own money. So for me to rely on a man, it was like, whoa, what is this? And he came through. And so it made me look at him a lot differently. Like he kept his word. He did what what he said he was going to do. And the same for me. When he was down, I helped him. And I did what I said that I would do for him. And it's like we were really in this thing together. And it made our marriage so much stronger. Yeah, I'm I'm making more money. I have more power. But we're, in, like you said, in this together. Working together to work this through. Wow. Right. Yeah, it made our marriage like super, super strong. And I, I think both of us had, we both let our guard down when we went through that. Yeah, yeah, becoming completely vulnerable. Yes. Wow. Yeah, I always say that going through challenges are really hard, but when you get through them, yes. the relationship's so much stronger. Yes, definitely. So, what advice would you give to somebody who wants to make the relationship extraordinary? Oh, I would say going in, that communication is extremely important. If you don't have someone that you can like really talk to and I would say say share, maybe not in the beginning, some of your most deepest thoughts and feelings, but communicate what you're, what you want, what you're looking for. And that may not be the right person for you. If you're not on the same playing field of what you're looking for maybe in the future then go for it in my relationship or when we met we were both looking for the same thing um look for that honesty but you have to pay attention because when someone shows you who they are in the beginning believe it and from what i've seen a lot of people don't pay attention the clues are there but you really have to pay attention. Listening is key. I went in with no expectations. Some people's expectations in the very beginning, like in the first week or two, are too extraordinary. They want to make him or her the husband like the next day. And that's almost almost impossible. You should dream big, 
but the other person has to dream big as well. A relationship is definitely going to take work because mine definitely did, but you can't be afraid to work on the relationship for the right person. You have to know what you want, know what you will ex- accept and know what you won't accept. Make a list. I made a list of the type of man that I wanted. I didn't get everything on the list because I aimed like super, super, super high. Um, But again, I knew what from dating previously, what I would accept and what I would not accept. Some people, I think, you know, they, they're just unrealistic. Yeah. You're like, you have to make your list. This is ideally, this is what I want. Yeah. And then choose your top few that you're not passing. This is what you're getting. And if not, it's not for you. And everything else will be so good if you do have it. Yeah. So it's right. a really good idea. Right. Yeah. If you know that, like, I know that I am a go-getter. I am driven. I'm a business. I'm an entrepreneur, like, to the T, to the high heavens. <laughs> I need that type of person. Like I'm always creating thinking of new business ventures. So I knew I had to find, it just made sense for me to be with someone that was like-minded. Yeah. Cause or else you just like be constantly fighting with each other and not being able to get along. Yeah. Exactly. I mean, it, it just made sense for me to be with who I'm with. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Thank you so much. It's great having you. You thank you. It was a pleasure. Guys, I hope you enjoyed that episode and subscribe to the podcast. Leave a comment below so I can know what you think. And to book your relationship photo shoot, see Jay's session, or just to hear more about what we do, go to lifepicksrelationships.as.me. I'm waiting.